The fertile northern region of Uganda was known for many years as one of the granaries of the country, consistently producing surpluses for local and international food markets. But two decades of civil conflict between the Ugandan government and the Lord's Resistance Army has left this region destitute. Between 1986 and 2006, an estimated 1.8 million people fled from their villages to the shelter of temporary camps. The war caused significant setbacks in education, healthcare, food production and infrastructure, leaving people vulnerable to food insecurity, HIV and gender-based violence. The conflict increased women's vulnerability to violence at the hands of soldiers, as well as their own husbands and other family members. Unable to feed their families, men became frustrated and turned to alcohol. Women often resorted to having sex in exchange for food and other goods. Rebuilding livelihoods is the first step for survivors of violence to improve their social and economic conditions and thus regain acceptance as productive members of their communities. They've lost almost everything, their assets, their livelihood assets. They have lost the skills that they, you know, they, they were used to farming and staying in the camps meant that a whole generation lost out on that, on the skills. The seed system itself was eroded. So we needed a better, a more holistic approach that could help these communities rehabilitate the agricultural livelihoods. The response by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has been to re-establish the livelihoods of the communities impacted by the conflict through the farmer field and life schools as well as the junior farmer field and life schools. The farmer field school is a successful methodology that's been used and been adapted by FAO to improve food security and nutrition in emergency and rehabilitation settings and more recently to address HIV and gender-based violence for both adults and children. They're a forum for farmers to rebuild their skills and share their knowledge. Funded by the Swedish International Development Agency, CEDA, the FAO regional project is reaching 75,000 people in five countries in Eastern and Central Africa, 14,500 of whom are in Uganda. In Adjumani district lies the verdant Nile River Valley. This area has become the temporary home of large numbers of both internally displaced people and refugees fleeing conflict from neighboring Sudan. A partnership here between the FAO and the Danish Refugee Council extends to providing small grants, distributing farming tools and even seeds to refugees and displaced Ugandans. This junior farmer field and life school is helping orphans and vulnerable children to become more self-sufficient, improve their food security and live healthier, more fulfilling lives. These children from Balala village meet three times a week with their facilitator. They learn about traditional and modern agriculture, entrepreneurship and, importantly, life skills. This group is performing what they call an agro-ecosystem analysis, AISA, to assess the health of their eggplants, determine the presence of pests and to assess whether those pests need to be treated. The intention is that they will not only develop their own farming practices, but that they will take their skills home and teach their parents what they've learnt. Life skills are embedded in the agricultural skills training. Children learn about staying healthy and protecting themselves from HIV through classroom-based discussions around protecting and treating their crops from pests. The ultimate goal of the junior farmer field schools is to empower the youth through the acquisition of life and practical skills that offer them better livelihood alternatives, improved gender relations and options for the future. Daniel Chandiga is 18 years old and he's been growing vegetables from home, from seed he received through the school.
ma da tala wa da da ke yan rima class tu derga ke nyawo ma sini awa ni ga da ko ba ko ba da ma 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 skru fu sini ko ya ma ri do sa while the youngsters are encouraged to discuss their new discoveries and build their self-esteem, it's clear that the project has, quite literally, been bearing fruit. Robert is just one of the children in a family of orphans to attend junior farmer field and life school. His guardian, Anton, is an orphan himself, and for him, the school has changed his whole life. Self-esteem, trust and livelihood skills have proven to be effective in addressing food security and reducing violence, hence promoting social inclusion and improved gender relations. 300 kilometers away in Kitgum district at Parlebeck Clinic, the farming program has taken on a new dimension. Nursing assistant Tony Arop and nursing officer Jane Lillian Addy run a voluntary HIV clinic where they test, treat and counsel dozens of people every day. According to the latest figures, HIV prevalence in Uganda stands at 6.3%, but the rates in war-affected areas like Kitgum are as high as 9%. Since this clinic was established in 2005, HIV-positive people from nearby villages no longer need to make the long walk to Kitcombe Hospital to get their treatment. We are going to Gem, or the village. Going to move, it's a bit tasty. No, men are stubborn. What the body says is that when the desire of the women, they rely on the desire of the women, that when the woman is positive, it's also positive. But that, that's not really the case. Sometimes there is discordance. So both of them should really come for SAV testing to confirm. Because the woman can be negative, the husband positive. So sometimes these men, they are stubborn. They say, you go and, you go and test. Your result is my result. As Tony and Lillian set up their mobile testing clinic at Kofata village, the farmer field school gets underway. Although everyone has come to attend the school, they're also voluntarily testing for HIV. The FAO has established a partnership with the Lutheran World Federation, whereby volunteers do counselling and testing side by side with the two nursing officers. The LWF trains community AIDS counsellors to provide psychological and social support for people living with HIV and also to raise awareness about HIV among people in the villages. Uh, we are now having the training from the Pharma Field School, ranging from household to HIV. So when we look around, we have the backyard gardens, which is empowering the local community. During those days, we were helpless in the mother camp. But now that we have a piece of land where we can carry out the vegetable production, to improve also the nutrition status because all along we were depending on the, the relief but now that we are able to produce the vegetables we are able to plant our cassava and even millet which is a stable food here all around kafata village there are clear signs of a successful farming program which is mitigating the impact of hiv and helping prevent gender-based violence 
Like the junior Pharma Field and Life Schools, the Pharma Field and Life School is a form of adult education based on the idea that people learn from field observation and experimentation. Groups of neighbouring farmers, men and women, gather regularly to observe and discuss each other's agricultural experiences. The Farmer Field School emphasises farming as a business, encouraging members to generate money from their crops. Rosanek joined Farmer Field School three months ago and has learned some valuable farming techniques. The project helps people to relearn the agricultural skills they've lost during the years of conflict. The Farmer Field Schools have helped reduce gender-based violence in the internal displacement camps through tackling one of the root causes of domestic violence lack of food security. This is my house. And this thing is for to avoid the mosquito. This one here. We call it net. Farmer field school. Teach me everything. I know everything. Even I can keep money. Even if 500, I can put it down. But last time I can't. I'm just going to drink only. And even some millet and what I'm, I can take it from here and go away to sell it. No even buying uniform, no even buying what. But now I'm okay. Since moving to Kafata village from a displacement camp, Robert Olu has joined the Farmer Field School. During discussions with other young farmers, he learned how important it is to prevent HIV. He's also used the money he earns from selling vegetables to set up the only shop in the community. But he's most proud of his latest purchase, a cow. This one is white and cooked with Indeed, nutrition plays a key role in the response to HIV and gender-based violence. The women of the Farmer Field and Life Schools here are extremely proud of their newfound food security and of the agricultural skills and nutrition knowledge they've acquired, as well as the wealth of soya products they can now produce. Uh, you know, in HIV, uh, positive living food is the most important thing. So when the farmers they are together and they know what they are supposed to plant, uh, what they are supposed to eat, and how many times, actually it's too good. That's why we are linking up together to, in the community with these farmers. The client, the biggest problem we are having when we are doing this follow-up of clients who are already HIV positive, most of the people when they are tested, they don't come up, hmm? they fear stigma. So they hide up in the community and spread it. To help fight that stigma, the Farmer Field School in Kofata village has a drama group which performs plays around HIV issues. They might be humorous, but their message is a central component of the field school. <laughs> Usually the farmer field schools are field and life schools are not necessary of only people with HIV AIDS because that is how do you identify and group them? That is like you're, you're isolating them, you're discriminating them. So when you go in a community that is, has an HIV AIDS problem, it is encouraged that these affected people are part of the field school, but they will be mixing with other 
people who may not necessarily be HIV AIDS positive. So that offers them a very strong social network uh, for support. If they have issues that they want to discuss, they will be open to discuss with their friends who are living with them in the same community. After 20 years of war, the displaced people of northern Uganda are moving from emergency to recovery. They are slowly reintegrating into the society they fled from so long ago, and in the process, taking new skills with them, which will enable them to rebuild their livelihoods and make a better future for themselves and their children. A future that holds the promise of lives that are healthier, more productive, and less vulnerable to violence.